consensually f <laughs> carney consent oh you're gonna have fuck carney yeah. okay you're switching it up i'm gonna probably marry the sister oh uh the one who we wendy yeah i think it's wendy but we, i could be wrong it might be wendy the one we don't know and then i would consensually kill china folks why do you want to help trying to kill herself that family screwed up we just talked oh, about because the family being yeah. so screwed up just it, here's I mean, your exit if you were to consensually f china she'd stop oh, here's the other thing about china phillips do you guys know who she's married to without googling it she used to be married to the guitarist of wilson phillips no yeah and i don't think so yeah he's the guitarist of wilson phillips i bet money on it i don't know if they got divorced or she remarried somebody. the guitarist of what wilson phillips oh i i didn't see that in the google search i did what I did see is that she was married to Stephen Baldwin. They've been uh, married for a long time. Well, then she must that. have divorced that guy and married him. China Phillips was married to that guitarist? Yeah. You sure? I'd put money on it. How much? This house? That's not much. Steve, do you have a, a guess here? Who do you think is right? I think she was only married to Stephen Baldwin. I don't. I, I mean, I don't want to say she wasn't married to the, to the guitarist first. That's right, Steve. You remember her married to a Baldwin. I say she was only married to Stephen Baldwin. If I had to lean towards one of you, I'd flip a coin and then say lean towards whichever one the coin told me to. Well, then, well, do that, that coin. Do that coin. What's wait? What are you waiting on? You better okay. back that coin. that coin all the way. You better back that coin with your life. All the way, man. With your Prince Albert. No, hes- no hesitation. I took my Prince Albert out. You did? Yeah. That's, that's just a big yeah. hole? Uh, yeah, there is a hole. Can you fit your toe in that hole? No, I cannot fit my toe in that, that hole. All right, heads, Joe, tails, Drew. Tail, leaning towards Drew. You lean towards Drew. I only see one spouse on her. William Baldwin is her only spouse. Get the hell out of here. So yeah. weird, everyone was wrong. This is Billy Baldwin. And she's 5'8". According to Wikipedia. Yeah, screw Wikipedia. <laughs> he leans wrong. You know what? I'll If I'm wrong, I admit it. I'm wrong. Yeah. One, China Phillips has been married to William Baldwin since 1995. <sighs> that is one, wiggle one marriage. The other Wilson was Wendy. So Wait, it, was it is Wendy, Wendy so you were right. So you've kind of sort of redeemed yourself. You were right about so that. Well, I guess. Way wrong about China Way Phillips' wrong. marriage. But you were in love with China Phillips for a while. Now you want to kill her. Yeah. Is that why you want to kill her? Yeah, China? You were full 180, bro. She didn't give That's you a chance. I, I just suddenly remembered that you were in love with China Phillips. Yeah. You rebuffed my teenage fantasies by not even knowing I, I existed. So now <laughs> I want to consensually kill you. How dare China Phillips not know you exist? They know what gives. What a small guy, small town from North of Ohio, big fancy pop star. Yeah. Did you send her a letter? No. Well, there you go. Have you guys ever written any fan letters? I sent away for the like Return of the Jedi, the Imperial Guard. I don't know. Doesn't count as a fan letter, dude. That's not a fan letter. <laughs> That's man. I you used the postal service right one time in your life. I did. I sent Pearl Jam a, a letter. You did? Yeah, in college. Nice. I've got some carrots for you all. It's coming back to me now. What did it say? Like, you, you know, how much the music meant to me and stuff like that. And I think I quoted the end of Heather's. My teen angst bullshit has a body count. The most popular people in school are dead. Everybody's sad, but it's a weird kind of sad. Wow. Like it's, flood, it's flashing back to me. I did like some sort of scribble scrabble artwork on the back that it was just, you know, Dude, tap, that's as abstract as it could get. So with that, that was no, you had no expectation of them writing back. No. They're like right. the number one band in the. Right? Yeah, you just wanted them to know what they meant to you. Yeah, like it meant that much to you at that time. You were a kid, probably listening to Pearl Jam in your room, and at that point, music is so like when you're discovering real music for the first time. Eighty nine X. Eighty nine X is where you listening to it. Oh yeah. What's their call letter? C I M X. I listen to W X U T more than I listen to eighty nine. W I O T. I listen to WIOT, WXUT, WXAR, 93.5 WGT. Did I ever tell you about the time I took a guy with developmental disabilities for a, a tour through 104.7 Studios? Because our buddy Tom Riggs, who we went to school with, he was a couple years behind nice. me. Steve, he worked at Cumulus, yeah, I, think I guess, did. which is 
a few of those different ones, and 1047 was one of them. I was like, hey, I have a buddy that works at Cumulus since he loves radio stations so much, and he loved every radio station. Like He loved, he was obsessed with radio, just the fact that they broadcast. He knew all the call letters. He, like, you know what I mean? He didn't, like, care about the music so much, but he just liked the act of broadcasting. Awesome guy. He had a big, giant, white mustache. He was, like, little, tiny guy. He, like... Like the size of like a little Muppet, but he had this big white mustache. Nice. And he would he would just randomly say things like <laughs> He loved the word nominee. Nominee. And he would poke you. Like he would just say nominee and poke you and then walk away. What was his name? Reeny. He's passed away now. He's but he was everybody's favorite. Hello, Joe. Do you like 1047 WIOT? I'm like, yes, yes, one of them. He would walk away. Nominee! And I was like, really, we're going to go. I'm going to take you to a tour of the station. So he never really knew what he was going to do. He's like, are we going to see the meters? Can we see the meters? And he wanted to see the meters of when you're talking, you know. Like, oh. <laughs> and we kind of peeked in. They saw that. But they had in at WFAL, they had a, a like a just like a shelving unit of all the old equipment they used to use, like in the 60s and the 50s and whatever, just sitting on a shelf. And he was like st- stimulating himself over. Like he was just like, ah, ah, like, <laughs> nuts. And was like, ah, he wanted to like, like put his face up against it all and like lick it and everything. And he was like pulling on it. And he almost pulled the whole thing on top of himself. I had to like stop him and like, no, 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 you <laughs> can't. No, you can't. It's You can look at it, but you can't. That's touch wonderful. It. It's like, it was so great. He loved it. Like, Oh, and then I took him to WIOT and that unbridled <laughs> joy. And when I took him to WIOT, they weren't expecting. I guess I didn't warn them about him enough. And so when he walked into the radio station, so they had whatever the stations that were together. I want to say it was like Kiss FM and WIOT and another one, all broadcasting simultaneously. And they had it was like a hallway, mm-hmm. and one room is WIOT, one room is Kiss FM, whatever. And so. He just starts going, like, just he's so excited. And they're all on the air and they're like, they all look, all the stations look. So I think he was simultaneously on all the Toledo stations at one time. And then I was like, oh, I'm a, um, and I was like, Tom Riggs was leading us and he's like getting red. Like, what is happening? Tell them to close their doors. Tell them to close their doors. And he's like, what? What? And I was like, close the door, close the doors now. But before I could say that, he he runs past Tom and past me, and he goes into 1047 where they're on the air and they're talking. <laughs> and so they, they're attacked by this tiny little man with a giant white mask that's going, meters, I want to see the meters. Wah, wah, wah. And he puts his face like right on the meters, and he's like, <laughs> and they have these giant, these giant like switchboards where they're doing the vibe, and he wants to just <laughs> fuck with all of them. I'm like, so I had I used took all all my strength this guy weighed maybe 85 pounds at the most and it took all my strength to get him out of that room and the djs are like what's happening what are we being oh, attacked man. what's happening he looked kind of like gurgy like I, I was like, wonderful he's just a pure adrenaline just oh. a joy and he was just happy like he wasn't yeah. upset or trying to ruin anything he just no, loved no, it just, so but adrenaline isn't bad adrenaline right. is a thing but yeah. After I took him to 1047 for the tour, he asked for a tour of the gas station. I had to fill up gas in my car. And he was like, can we take a tour of the BP? And I was like, you want a tour of the gas station? He's like, yes, I would like a tour of the BP station. And I was like, oh, okay, I got to go in and pay. So come on. This is the candy aisle. And this is the automotive aisle. And he was like just as into the tour of the BP as he was oh, the radio wonderful. station. Carlos Summer here.